Again, it's good to have you here with, with us today, and, and uh, I just got a, uh, a few little simple things for you this morning. Question, what did they yell at Edgar Allan Poe when he nearly walked into a tree? What did they yell at Edgar Allan Poe when he nearly walked into a tree? Poe, a tree! Get it? Poe, a tree? <laughs> If, if, I, if I send a clown to deliver flowers to my wife, is that a romantic gesture? What, what did grandfather clock, no, what, what did the digital clock say to the grandfather clock? What did the digital clock say to the grandfather clock? Digital clock say to the grandfather clock. Look, Grandpa, no hands. <laughs> All right. Oh. And uh, who would ever thought that the phrase, I wouldn't touch you with a six-foot pole would become a national policy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh, good morning. Good morning. Have everyone out today. Good to see you this morning. I'm not sure if Buddy's going to go on the road with this or, or not. And uh, when he gets up, when he gets doing these things, I think back to the old Abbott and Costello and and um, those, you know, those, you know, those, those kind of guys and Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis and, and those are the good ones. Now, do we have those anymore? Uh, Abbott, I mean, anybody like that anymore? Not very many. Wonder why not? Yeah, that was good, good humor. Good humor. Yeah. Yeah, where's the ball of hopes and the red scale? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Bibles. John, chapter 3. Beginning in verse 1. John, chapter 3, verse 1. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you. For this morning's opportunity, Lord God, to gather here at this church, to come to praise you, to worship you, Lord. And so we do so this time. We lift you up as our King, as our Lord, as our God, as our Savior. And we give it all praise and honor to you, Lord. So right now, Lord, just open us up to your word this morning that when we leave the doors of the church, we can say that it was good to be in the house of the Lord today. And we just trust, Lord God, that your, your word will not return to you void. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Familiar verse to you? When was the last time you heard this? Last week. Last week. Last week. Kind of didn't have to change any of the music. Right? Those were all the same. Call to worship was the same. I don't know if you, re you know, realize that or not, buddy. Call to worship was the same. And scripture verse is the same this last week. Because we want to just take it one step further, 11 minutes, and we're out of here today. Oh, did someone say amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. I, I've said that for the last two weeks, and I've not hit it quite on the nail yet. You know, on it, but we will get there. But very, very familiar verses. Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. He went over that last week. We talked last week, initially at the very beginning, in the fact that that, uh, that that we that we in Christianity, us Christians, we kind of have our own language. Remember talking about that last week that 
that, that we all have our own language, our own way of saying things, and, and it can be very confusing to people, uh, for, for people to hear and for people to comprehend it, yet we speak that kind of a language to an unchurched group of people. And we expect them to come through the uh, doors of our church because of the things that we say to them, and, and it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. We all have our, our languages that we speak in our professions. It doesn't matter what profession you're in or, or, or even, even out and about, just different things that we do. You know, just our own language. So we use that language as Christianity language, if you would, when we talk to, even talk to the unchurched people. We talk about rapture and righteousness and resurrection and redemption and salvation and, and uh, sanctification and grace and mercy and, and all these words we throw out. And people have no idea what we're talking about. And the problem we have is we within the church don't always understand it. We can have someone up here teaching and talking and preaching about sanctification maybe and, and their righteousness, and we don't, we don't know what that's really all about. So we even struggle within the walls of our church understanding things. And so we have Nicodemus, who a very, very educated man when he came to Jesus. Very educated. He lived his entire life in the world of education because he was a teacher. And yet, Jesus told him that he must be born again. And he didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. <coughs> Kineo anothen. Kineo anothen. That is the Greek word, born again. Kineo, we talked about last week, people really don't have a problem with that term. Kineo meaning born. But anothen in the Greek takes on a couple different words, phraseologies in there, if you would. One of those phraseologies is the word again, which our Bible translators, at least eight out of every ten of the Bible translators, use the word again for anothen and saying that you must be born again. Okay? But anothen, if you recall, when we were talking last week, also has different meanings to it, or different ways of using it, maybe is a better way of saying that. Another way is gneo anothen, born anew. Or Gneo Anothen, born from above. Again, a new above. Very similar, very similar, but possibly some minute differences when you get the uh, scalpel out or the magnifying glass out and maybe try to separate that a little bit. Okay. So what I want to do this morning is I just want to touch just briefly on those two terms, being born anew and being born from above. Being born anew and being born from above. So to be born anew just simply applies that a person needs to be born anew or they need to be different. Something has to change. It implies that, that if, it's, if something is new, then there had to be something that was old. Something new had to be born anew as compared to something that was old. And I think a lot of times it's people who restore automobiles, as an example, or people who take homes and they, and they want to flip a house, so to speak, and they, and they go and they gut the house and they make this house look completely different. You know, you watch those shows on TV and, and, and they have those and you, just, you don't even recognize it, right? You don't even recognize it. Or people who take automobiles and they fix those automobiles up and they make them look new but they're completely different than what they were before. My, uh, my dad had a uh, 79 uh, Chevrolet Caprice that probably sat in the garage, I'd say, for probably eight years and never drove a mile. And uh, a, a friend of mine bought it uh, just uh, two weeks ago. And when you looked at the car before, it had, had 39,000 miles on it, you know. When you looked at the car, you know, it was all dusty and everything was popped. And he took it to the car wash. He bought it for a thousand dollars. I told him I'd give him nine hundred. You know, but it was you know, but he made it look new. I think it looked like it just came off the showroom floor. And I and I contend this to the church this morning. For us as Christians to be born anew, you know, we can come into the church every Sunday morning. We can praise God and we can worship God and we can we can do all kinds of things. We can amen. We can shout. We can sing. We can do everything inside the walls of this church. But when a person is born anew. You don't prove yourself to be born anew inside the church. 
You prove yourself to be born anew when you're outside the walls of the church. You prove yourself to be born anew when people can see you by what you do on a daily basis. They know who you were yesterday, but if you are born anew, they know that you are a different person today than you were yesterday. A different person today than you were yesterday. I am not the same person today that I was even yesterday. I hopefully am still growing in Christ today. But I think of my life before I accepted Jesus Christ, before He came into my life as to who I was, I was Ganeo and Nothan. I was born again. I was born anew. Because people would look at me. What I did on Friday night, 40, 41 years ago, 41 years ago what I did on a Friday night, the next Friday night, it wasn't even in my thought process. I'd wake up after I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I was a new creation in Christ. The old person was gone. The new person is here. But people would look at you, of course, and they're going to judge you. Yeah, but they're going to wonder, what in the world happened to you? Why are you different today than what you were last night? Or yesterday, or last week, whenever that time frame is, when you see that person, you know? I have been born anew. I am not the same. I don't look the same. I don't feel the same. I don't smell the same. Though some of those may be, you know. But I'm just a new person. I put on new clothing, if you would. I am in Jesus to be born anew. It's not proven right here in the church. It's proven outside the walls of the church. It's proven where you work and, and, and the people that you associate with. And maybe the people that you used to associate with, you're not associating with anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anymore. <clears throat> because you were born anew. People will recognize it. They will see it. They will cling to that. That is how we, that is how we witness to other people outside the walls of the church. Simply because they know that we are born anew. We don't have to use all the big words of our faith that we were talking about just a minute ago. We, they, we just have to let people to see us as a new creation in Christ. Because if you're truly born anew, you are not the same. You're not the same. You are a new creation. And people will see that. And that's what's going to draw people to Christ. You know, we, we got, we've got to really believe in that KISS philosophy. Keep it simple and sincere when we're out witnessing to people. But we need to be letting our light shine before the world. People's got to see Jesus living within us. That is how we bring people to God. That's how we share the gospel with other people. To be born anew. To be born anew. It's, it's something that, 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 you know, a lot of people, a lot of people in the world want to change. They, they see their circumstances and they see their situations and they want to change. But they can't change. They try to change things on their own. But they can't change. A lot of people want to change somebody else. You know, they, you know they, they, get, they get married thinking, well, I'll marry such and such a person and I'll change them. And you know, you can't change them. They've got to, first of all, want to change. But the true change can only take place through Jesus Christ to be born anew. Ganeo and Nothan, to be born again. Ganeo and Nothan, to be born anew. Ganeo and Nothan, to be born from above. Ganeo and Nothan to be born from above, meaning that, they, that, that because I am Ganeo and Nothan born from above, God is now entering into my life. And my daily walk is different than what it used to be. Again, very similar to being 
anew, very similar to being, again, because the words are inter intertangled and intertwined together. But I allow God on a daily basis to dictate my life, to where I'm going and the things I'm doing, who, I'm, who I am associating with, the things I watch, the things I read, what I hear. I allow God from above to come down and control my life. I want Him to have total control of my life. And yet we have this tendency so much, especially after we've been after after we've been a Christian for quite some time, to want to be able to do things on our own and not give to God and allow Him to every single day to shape and to mold us into the person He wants us to be. Because after we've been in in Christ for a while, we think we can just go ahead and do it ourselves. But every day, we need to be able to wake up each and every morning and ask God to use me on this day. Make me the person that you want me to be on a daily basis. We want to be born a, 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 from above on a daily basis where God is with you and walking with you and talking with you. and He's right by your side each and every step of the way be born from above. So in our reading this morning, in Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus, he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be Ganeo and Nothan. Again, our translators put the word in again for us. Okay? That's what they used in probably every translation that you have here today. But this confused this intelligent man, Nicodemus. Well educated. On his way to heaven in his mind. He thought he was doing everything right. He thought if he just continued on the same path that he was on. And in comparison to the next guy over. In comparison to his neighbor. He was doing good. So he was on his way to heaven, and he was climbing that religious ladder. Jesus says to him, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. We talked briefly about this last week. You must be born of water and spirit. You must have an earthly birth. You are here living on this earth. You, you've been born on this earth. But you also must be born of the Spirit. You must have the Spirit of God living within you. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. He tells Nicodemus, so you, you shouldn't be surprised at my saying you must be born again. But Nicodemus just didn't understand. Yeah, he asked that in verse 9, how can this be? You know, the wind blows. We were talking about the wind blowing last week. God dictates who he's going to blow the wind on, so to speak. God, God controls all that. You don't have any control over God. If God decides to blow on this group, he's going to blow on this group. If he decides to put the wind on this group over here, he's going to do that. And we can't control that. If God decides to blow the wind on this church and everyone can go out of this church anew and to be witnesses and to testify people can't control that you can't control that the wind blows where it's going to blow the wind blows is where it goes only dictated by God himself and yet Nicodemus didn't understand highly educated Somewhere in the process, somewhere in the process, Nicodemus, we know, accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He was no longer at that point ashamed to call Jesus the Savior. He was no longer ashamed to say, I was born again, I was born anew, I was born from above. Because we know, though we only read about him two other times in Scripture, in the Gospel of John, we know that in the midst of all his peers, in the midst of all those gathered, when they, were, when they were judging Jesus, when Jesus was on trial, 
It was, it was Nicodemus who stood up and spoke to the council. He said, do we try any man without hearing what they have to say first? Without giving a person the opportunity to defend themselves? He was willing to make a public statement to the Sanhedrin. He may have come to Jesus at night, but now with his peers, he's willing to testify. And he and Joseph of Arimathea were so bold that they were willing to put their lives on the line and go to Pilate and ask for the body of Jesus. So born again, born anew, born from above, Gineo and Nothan. It's my hope that everyone here is going to know another. And that you will sell out to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you do not know Him as your Lord and Savior, it is very simple. You just simply ask, have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. That you just simply say to Jesus, I am a sinner. I am a sinner and I repent of my sins. Come into my life. Come into my heart. I want to give my life to you, Lord. And if you're willing to say that, very simple, He will come and He will reign within you. And you will be born from above and new and again. So if you not, are not that, I just pray that you become that. You can do that as you sit here. You can come forward to the altar if you want and pray and ask God to come into your life. But if you don't know Him, it's my hope that before this day ends, you come to know who Jesus is as your Savior and Lord.